Welcome to the Changing Stage Show. My name is Florentino, and I'm excited again for another episode here on Entertalk Media Networks, or Entertalk Networks, however you want to call us today. Uh, we are uh, here in sunny San Diego in our live streaming room where we do live concerts. That's why the whole big black background thing, although it's a very tight uh, 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 shot. In back of me, if you could kind of, if I move over there, ooh, great. We got a baby grand piano that's just sitting back there that hopefully I'll get a chance to play today. I don't get a chance to, to hang out with it very often. But uh, with that said, you know, we are all about the music industry and bridging the music industry. And I want to give a shout out to one of our, our great sponsors, Artesia at ArtesiaPro.com. Uh, they make everything from home keyboards to uh, keyboards that you could put into your backpack and take along with you and audio gear and all kinds of fun stuff. Great guys over there. And uh, uh, they'll be changing the the percussion world with their new f note drum line that they're announcing here on november 7th we'll be doing a broadcast with tris imboden from uh, chicago and kenny loggins and john paris from earth wind and fire both incredible iconic drummers being hosted by uh, mike bedard uh, and you might know him from his days with jordan sparks so with that said i'd i'd, I'd like to introduce you guys to a new friend uh you know we're gonna hopefully be uh, uh fast buddies because this industry is small and we all work together i'd like to introduce you to uh anthony matana say hello anthony hey florentino thank you so much for having me today you are welcome man i appreciate you coming on board and uh, exciting times for you guys here uh you guys are basically uh, in the middle of a kickstarter campaign and uh, you, 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 you've got a new product out that I, actually, you know, when it's ready, man, I'd like to get uh, get a couple for our roving uh, uh, correspondence. It is a device, uh, basically, it's a lavalier mic that you can use with Bluetooth. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, first and foremost, it's a product made for guys like you. It's the world's first fully contained. It's the smallest pro-grade Bluetooth lavalier microphone that allows you to capture pro-grade sound at no latency with no lag uh, to any device. This is actually it right here. You can wow, see that. That is, that is very, very cool. It almost looks like, a, uh, I don't know, looks like a puck, like a small puck. You can play hockey with it and use it as a recording device. <laughs> don't play hockey with it. Designed to be totally, totally self-contained, totally portable, totally versatile a nice sturdy enclosure with a metal clip. That's the important part, right? Metal steel clip that can basically be expanded, slid onto any shirt in any way, and uh, just worn, basically just like that. So what's cool about the lav is that all of the enclosure sits behind the clothing. So it's not this big uh, clunky sort of bug that's sitting out on your lapel. It's designed to be inside so that all you then see is a nice brush steel clip that doesn't detract or take any light. The microphone is sort of sandwiched in between the, the cream filling, as I say, of the Oreo of the puck. So no matter what orientation you wear it in, um, the microphone is going to be pointed at the voice to capture pristine sound to any device. Now, one of the things that we found with, with lavalier mics, and, and because of the way you designed this, might actually help with that is we get a lot of clothing rub you know noise or uh you know or the guys with the beards you get the scruffy scruffy beard noise uh how does your lavalier handle that yeah so there's a couple of factors that play into it one of which lav is incorporated with multiple pro grade digital mems microphones that are very specifically placed inside of the enclosure and are designed inside of the enclosure to not be right on the surface and any type of friction or problem that you would have with say a standard uh, analog microphone or an analog mic capsule that's just attached to a clip and right there, right? So with the, the digital mic sort of planted inside of it, 
any sort of rub along the surface is not going to create that. And with digital mics, you get a lot more control over that noise if anything like that occurs. Um, that being said, too, with putting it, like I said, in the middle of the cream filling, the only things that are really coming in contact, right, are the top of the enclosure and the bottom of the enclosure. Those can rub, but nothing's going to rub over that sort of piece when it's sitting there. So it's actually in a spot where it's sandwiched between anything that's going to come in contact, right? Whether that's a hand or a shirt underneath. Um, that being said, the lob does also come with two uh, pretty high grade uh, custom windscreens that we've made, a uh, sort of standard windscreen that works for normal wind environments and then a dead cat furry that'll work for like severe wind environments. So we've tested this sort of design a lot. It's very unconventional. It's a little different. But the way in which we've worked it with the antenna, the placement of digital microphones, just the placement of the mic within the enclosure is all designed to keep recording at a low profile package and without any noise. And that that's super cool. Now, and I, I can imagine that's going to work great for everyone who does their recording with their iPhones. If you're like an anchor mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, broadcaster, you know, with that service where they, they use their phones as the predominant uh, podcasting uh, solution. How does that work? Say if you have a if you want to use it with a mixer, is there a receiver that you, you plug into like an XLR or a quarter inch? that is able to communicate, you know, with the mic back and forth. And if you're using, I mean, this is kind of a two-part question. Uh, I'm, kind of, I'm, <laughs> yeah, no I'm kind of geeking out right now myself. So um, yeah. If, yeah. If, if you are using it with, uh, uh, say, your, your, your laptop, your phone, your tablet, are you able to run multiple microphones in the same instance? Okay, there's a lot of parts there, so I'm yeah, going to yeah. break it down. And I think the, the best way to break it down is to really exemplify the modes in which we've designed for the for, for Hook Lav. I should say, too, right, my background is as a theatrical Broadway sound designer. So I've been using Lavs on stage in Broadway and as a post-production mixer, um, an on-set mixer for indie films in New York before I got into making microphones. I started making Bluetooth microphones because I wanted a lot of the pro-grade technologies that I would utilizing right over radio frequencies and through heavy equipment with adapters to work on my mobile devices. Bluetooth has become very powerful, and if you create a Bluetooth codec from the ground up, you actually have a lot of control over it. So we're utilizing this proprietary codec that we've built, like I mentioned, that can capture dual-grade 24-bit 48k wave files over Bluetooth to Android and iOS at no latency. Now I say no latency because our latency right now is clocking in at about 0.43 milliseconds wow, and the yeah. standard ear can't detect anything over, you know, until you get to around 12. So we're not seeing it, right? So there are different modes in which LAV can sort of jump into depending on the situation. First one, solo mode. Take a LAV, pair it to your phone, open up the hook app, and record audio only or video seamlessly captured from the mic here. Overrides the built-in mic and all the audio is right from there with the video that you can take and share anywhere. Then you have duet mode. We've actually designed this so that you can pair two lobs independently to a single device because it can record uh, dual channel audio. And with a single phone, you can do a, 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 a channel one and channel two recording, which is oh, perfect cool. for podcasts, cool. interviews, yeah. and more, right? Then you get into the world of, okay, I don't have a Bluetooth device. I have a mixer. I have a DSLR camera. I have a GoPro. You use a proprietary codec. How am I going to work on that? Well, I invented receiver mode. Receiver mode allows you to pair one audio or one lav wirelessly to another. Send audio, the transmit, to the receiver lav. Every lav is equipped with a TRRS jack which can be used to plug in headphones or even an external microphone. But in receiver mode, the receiver lav can output via an aux cable into the external mic jack on any device, right? Any camera that's got an external mic. So you've created a wireless link like you would a standard sort of RF belt pack microphone, but without all the adapters, out all the connectors, out all the real stress. And what's amazing about that too, right, is that you can then use it in receiver mode for any smartphone app. Okay, we use a proprietary codec. So when these Facebook Live or Instagram Live opens, they don't know how to connect with our microphone. 
I wish they did, but you know, until I sell 500 million units and a Kardashian is backing this, they're not going to incorporate that code, right? So we use this receiver mode to handle that because iOS and, and Android are natively set up that if any external microphone plugs into the phone, then it knows upon any app open to use that external microphone. Well, in receiver mode, I send audio to one, the other one plugs into the phone, and then I can use it on any app I desire and take advantage of our pro-grade 24-bit 48K recording codec. Wow, that is pretty damn awesome, man. I guess that's why you... I should mention, I apologize for it, you know, okay. one more, which is even yeah. a bigger one, is island mode. Island mode has eight gigs of internal storage. Uh, the, the lav has eight gigabytes of internal storage on it, so you can record directly to it. But what the, what the storage also does is every time you capture a recording, backs up the recording in a second file internally to the device in real time, then wow. syncs it with the stream that you made in post after you hit end, allowing you for a seamless, guaranteed dropout-free experience. Solo mode, duet mode, receiver mode, island mode for any situation and any device you may desire. This is six years in the making of me trying to figure out Bluetooth microphones, and this is the one that can work on any device. Yeah, Bluetooth has been a unique proposition in this world. Uh, like I said, one of our clients uh, creates uh, a, a MIDI keyboard that uses Bluetooth, and that was one of the challenges mm -hmm. that they faced was the, was the latency piece, which they were able to get rid of as well. Not many companies know how to do that, so kudos to you on that. That's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, Thank now, you. Yeah. With that said, um, is it still the standard 30 feet that you're getting with this, or are you able to, because you're using a, a different uh, 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 you know, encoding technology, are you able to go farther than 30 feet? Right now, we're getting in our, uh, in our initial prototypes 15 meters, around 45 feet. Okay. So that is a, uh, uh, definitely a, a much better... You know, for your standard interview, uh, uh, you know, I'm excited about the the pairing mode that where you can have two that will record, uh, you know, to one mm -hmm. device. Uh, now, as you mentioned, you could record to each device. Can you um, can you just use the one device as the standalone recording and pairing that with the, the other one so that you could have two microphones recording to the actual uh, uh, lab itself? Or do you always have to have the intermediary recording when you're doing something along those lines? Are you saying, like, can you send audio wirelessly from two LAVs to a single receiver LAV and then output from that receiver LAV? Um, that wasn't what I was saying, but that's a good question. No, what I'm saying is you've got your uh, puck here that's the guest, and you've got your puck here that is the, the host. Instead of having the intermediary phone or iPad or, or laptop that's Bluetooth enabled, you you basically record directly to the puck of the of say that the host and sure particular... yeah i mean you could do a you could do a round table with six people around the table all recording in island mode record internally to the lobs take those files sync them in post bring them on your computer and be good very cool and if you were going to uh, um buy one of these because it can't be purchased yet in stores or online but you can get in in line to get one if you go to the uh the gofundme campaign can you uh or i'm sorry the kickstarter campaign i always get those two mixed up the kickstarter campaign uh what's the url for that and we'll, we'll we'll put that in the in the link as well but what's the what's the url to the kickstarter what can someone hope to get the device for if they get in line right now and what is it going to be street price later on when when it goes into the brick and mortar and to online yeah, totally. So Kickstarter does not play well with URLs. They're insane URLs. Easiest way is probably to go to our website, hookaudio.com, H-O-O-K-E, audio.com. Big link to our Kickstarter there. You can also go to Kickstarter and search HookLav, H-O-O-K-E, Lav. We launched on September 22nd. It's a 30-day campaign. Uh, in 28 days, we've raised over $550,000 for the Lav. Um, they were they were lower uh, or higher discounts, so you could get the product at a lower price earlier on in the campaign. Now you can still get a two pack up to forty percent off, uh, but that campaign is ending at eight o'clock central this Thursday, October twenty second in the morning. Uh, the product will retail for one seventy nine for a single pack, and we're still working on an incentive for the dual pack. It won't be exactly one seventy nine times two, uh, but that. 
uh, price is still subject to change. But we'll be on Kickstarter for the next two days. Then we jump over to Indiegogo In Demand, which is a really cool platform for crowdfunding campaigns that continue to take pre-orders um, after the campaign ends. Uh, and you can get it there at a discount as well. Wow. For us, this is our second uh, crowdfunding campaign that we've launched. In a lot of ways, our community is through Kickstarter. We kind of like to pride ourselves on being a crowdfunding-based uh, microphone company. It's where my devote audience is. We have really good backers there that give great feedback. And I like launching all of our products on crowdfunding because it's just a great way to engage with the community and make the products better. Very cool. You know what? Uh... It always amazes me how people engage these these communities. Now, did you start building this community with your first product, which was the the 3D microphone, or how did how did you start to uh, you know how does someone you know with a great product idea put it up on Kickstarter with all the other campaigns that are going out out and around and and generate enough awareness and enough uh, uh, you know uh, um, buzz to get people to, you know, enough people to give them over half a million dollars. I mean, like you said, it's, it's really all about the community. And um, it, it's so funny how so many, there seems to be sometimes a disconnect or sometimes people don't see them as being the same thing, but the same progress you can make in meaningful in-person relationships and how you carry yourself and how you respond to people and how you listen to people is completely transferable online. Right? I make myself open and available and transparent with everyone on that community and everyone in that campaign uh, to answer their questions, to come to their queries. And that really, really goes a long way. Right? When you make a company and you launch something, it's often like a customer support agent or some other you know, bot team that sort of offsources it. I make myself available because I'm these people. I'm a designer. I'm a sound designer. I'm a musician. I, I made these products because I didn't have access to them in the theater. So the least I can do is make myself available to this community when I'm trying to get them to engage with these crazy products that I'm trying to make. So I always say, you know, the crowdfunding campaign isn't the work. It's the seven months of prep you do before that launch. It's the newsletters. It's the engagement. It's, you know, making people feel like you don't just show up online and say, give me money, give me money. In a way, you're asking for money, right? But you're also asking for people to tell you, is this important to you? I'm making this not just for myself, but all of you. And you just have to be a human. You just kind of like, don't be a jerk. You know, it's really easy to hide behind a screen online and not be who you say you are. I just make sure I show them I am who I am. I'm a sound designer. I'm incredibly passionate about this. I started it from on my own. And people want to know that and people appreciate that. And as long as I can be honest with them, it can go a really long way. Our first campaign I did completely organically. I didn't have any community. I didn't have, you know, any backing. I didn't have any money to push it. I was just there from day one talking to as many people as I can, thinking of so many people that I could that would like this product and just said, you know, what do you think? And that's enough. That can just be enough. But you just have to keep communicating. It's like networking at a cocktail party, but, you know, it's on a Reddit forum. It's the same thing. That's very cool, man. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I love that. You know, we we, uh, you know, we started off as one pos- podcast, grew to 19, and we did that all with community. And I even teach a class yeah. on how to do content marketing. So, I, you know, I, I, I respect that greatly here. Now, you know, with that said, you did come up with a really cool product before this one. Uh, it's a 3D microphone. Tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah. And I mean, that was a direct result of my work in Broadway sound design. For those of you out there who aren't aware, binaural audio is this really, really crazy type of audio. It's audio captured identically to the way you hear the world. I like to kind of say it's like the GoPro for sound. You can use a binaural microphone and capture sound in full 360 degrees, identically to the way you hear the world, right? We don't just hear left and right. We hear in front, behind, above, below. A binaural microphone can capture all that because it literally either puts a microphone in your ears or it makes a dummy ear and puts the microphone inside of it. We are able to localize and directionalize sound based upon how it reflects around our ears. So when you put a microphone in there, it's like putting a record button on your eardrum. And when I was working on Broadway, I was setting up, which is in the sort of audio sphere to be the the best known binaural microphone, which is the Neumann 
uh, I, KU some number binaural dummy head that's owned by Sennheiser. Sennheiser owns Neumann. And they make this this dummy head. It's about $11,000. It's really, really high end. It's got great adapters, uh, needs a lot of cables, has all this setup. And I was setting it up in, you know, row E seat seven of the mezzanine uh, in these Broadway houses to archive the production. So someone could experience it like they heard it from the seat. And it was one day I was sitting in the theater and I'd known about binaural audio and thought, my God, this is an amazing way to tell stories. This is like an amazing way to capture our lives and share it. Because the crazy thing about binaural audio is you don't have to have any special hardware or software to experience it. On our YouTube channel, there are hundreds and hundreds of videos from our customers all around the world who have captured immersive binaural audio with our first product, The Verse. And all you need is a pair of headphones to experience it. So I'm setting up this dummy head in the theater seats and I'm looking at the stage and I'm looking back at the dummy head and I'm looking at myself, I'm looking back at the stage and I'm like, use your head, you dummy. Like, what am I doing here? I'm trying to set up this dummy head in the exact same height as I've got a head. I've got ears. I hear the world. Why can't I capture that? And how do I bring that to my smartphone? How do I pair that? with video to change the way we record the world and share these stories, right? Because the smartphone mic hasn't been upgraded in years. Everything goes with camera, everything goes with video, but what about sound, right? And I knew if I wanted to bring binaural recording to the masses, and again, a, a word that still people don't really understand, I couldn't add another piece of gear to people's lives. I couldn't be like, someone's gonna walk out the door and be like, let me grab my phone, my headphones, and my microphones. They're not gonna do that. but. When I started this product in 2014, I was living in New York, I was taking the subway to Times Square every day, and every single person around me had headphones in their ears. Bluetooth headphones really hit a critical mass between 2013 and 2015. And I sort of upgraded that. I said, okay, let's make Bluetooth headphones that allows you to listen back to your binaural recordings with built-in binaural mics in each of the ears. And thusly, the hook verse was born the first pair of Bluetooth headphones with built-in binaural microphones that allows you to capture this pro-grade audio wirelessly to any Android or iPhone. The same codec that is incorporated into the Verse is worked into the LAV. Arguably, the LAV has got some better upgrades because some of the software has changed over the years. But same concept about bringing pro-grade recording technologies to everyday users with everyday devices without sacrificing quality but through a, a medium like Bluetooth that is a lot more accessible. Man, you guys make some crazy products over there. In fact, I was uh, yeah. talking to Star how we got connected. So, hey, Star, if you're if you're listening to this right now, I appreciate you connecting. Hey, Star. Yeah, me and Thanks Anthony for making us friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is going to be great. Uh, yeah, at some point, I, I know you guys are sold out, man, but uh, we're in line for the next run, man, because we uh, – uh, in our live uh, concert venue, I'd love to have that experience shared. Uh, our, our goal for for our live uh, uh, performances is to, to not have people in the audience, but pe bring people on stage. That's the beauty of what we do with, with this live streaming is that you can actually be there on stage. We try to have a lot more up-close, personal visuals, see the passion of the singer, see the virtuosity of the piano player, saxophone player, right, you know, where you wouldn't be able to get that if you were in the audience. So that's part of our, our goal, and, and it would be great to, to have the audio as not if they are, you know, listening to it on a, a CD or, you know, a, a, some type of streaming device or MP3, but to hear it as if they were right there with, you know, at the bass player's position or in where the drummer's at or where the lead singer's at. So uh, we want to incorporate that with 3D video. So hopefully we can get on that uh, next uh, round of production that you have for those. When do you think you're going to be coming out? With yeah, those, you know, and we, we make this, um, we do this recording series. It's actually a playlist on our YouTube channel that we call the Hook Live Sessions. And the Hook Live Sessions are these one-shot, one-take music videos where the cameraman, you know, is basically moving throughout this performance on stage. And you are not only seeing what he sees, but you're hearing what he hears. My whole argument is that we put a camera to our eye to allow people to see what we see. But we don't put a microphone to our ear. It's like, why? We yeah. put the microphone in our hands. Well, our hands don't hear, our ears do. So the live sessions are really, really cool because you get to move with this cameraman as he moves throughout this space, seeing and hearing what he sees and hears. We did a really cool one with uh, the American Idol star, Daughtry, 
on stage before one of his shows in Massachusetts before obviously all this went down. And you can hop right on stage and hear and see from the cameraman's perspective. We held off on manufacturing more verses because the technology, the internal storage that we're using on the lav to, pre to prevent any kind of dropouts or lag is what we want to put into the verse. So we do plan to ship the verse V2 in a similar time point to when we'll be shipping the hook lav, which is spring of next year. Awesome. Awesome. Well, hey, man, uh, last thoughts. We've mentioned yeah. it throughout this whole interview, um, you know, you know, the time of COVID, you know. Um, the, you know, the what now, all of the different things are, that are happening. You know, you're a musician. In fact, I didn't even ask you, what, what, what mus instrument do you play? I'm Italian-American raised, so I learned rhythm on the drum set and theory on the accordion. Okay. <laughs> very, yeah. Very cool. It's kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. I always say, like, I wore the piano to learn, you know, bass <laughs> and treble clef, which is, I think, why I got into theater sound. Hey, hey if you would do one of those videos where you play the accordion, drums, and... Um, you know, like kazoo, you probably would probably could make enough money to fund the rest of your campaign. Yikes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I have to really, that's a, that's an interesting pairing. Yeah. <laughs> so with that said, um, what's your thoughts on the, 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 where we're at with the music industry? You know, you probably know a lot of, you know, you, coming from Broadway, you probably know a lot of people that are, you know, looking for a gig right now. They're just trying to figure out how they can survive. I don't know what programs they have for the, the folks in the, in the world of Broadway, but I know I got a lot of musician friends, people with, with pretty major names that are trying to figure out, is this the business they want to be in uh, tomorrow? I say yes, but, you know, uh, I always like to hear, what are the thoughts? You know, I, obviously your, your device works for not just musicians, for, you know, so many different worlds businesses, uh, podcasters, um, just anybody, you know, uh, that wants to do some, you know, some, some audio recording to, you know, a Bluetooth device. It's, you know, both of them are, are amazing for that. But for, for the, for the performers, what do you, what do you say now? What do you, what are your thoughts and where do we go from here? In 2014, when I was thinking about making these sort of mobile based microphones, I was really tapping into what was happening with artists and creators and how they were capitalizing on the big thing that mobile creating brings that nothing else can, which is immediate engagement, immediate validation, and immediate results. The, the concept of using social media, of using a mobile device wherever you are to be able to capture and share has brought personalities and careers out of so many people that other sort of technologies could never bring. So back in 2014, when I said I want to make microphones for smartphones, it's because back then I saw the potential of what could be done by making something on a device that could go in your pocket, right? Because I was traveling all over New York. I was hopping up on the subway at Times Square and something amazing was happening. I wanted to be able to capture that. And I saw the potential that these, these smartphones and these mobile devices could do the thing that I just saw wasn't lacking, right, was the sound quality. So I've always envisioned a mobile making sort of sphere for six, seven years now. And that just continues to happen. We continue to create on these mobile devices because of the immediate engagement it allows us with the audiences around us. I mean, look at all the celebrities and the stars that have come from a platform like TikTok. It has only come from a mobile platform. And that's the sort of platforms and the channels that we're going to use now. And so it's only smart to make devices that work that way. So I always saw a mobile making future. The pandemic just sort of forced it, you know, but it's still the same thing. Well, yeah, Anthony, I really appreciate your time here, brother. You know, you are a busy man. You've got a big campaign, Kickstarter campaign. Uh, you are going to um, get a new line of 3D microphones getting out there in the world. And hopefully, uh, you know, make this industry a better place by making it a lot more convenient and providing the technologies, not just these, but other ones, future ones. Sounds like you have a really keen mind and eye for what what what's the next big thing. So I really appreciate you being on here. And uh, last words to the audience. If you can make a product that someone a lot smarter and crazier than you can use in a way that 
you never even dreamed of, then you have a product. And that's the type of products I want to make. Things that inspire people to be creative, that can be accessible, versatile, and portable. Because there's so many opportunities out there. We just need to give people the tools to be able to capitalize on them. That's what I'm all about. Letting people be heard. Well, again, hey, Anthony, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for tuning into the Changing Stage show powered by Inner Talk Networks. We've got some great things coming up. Uh, make sure you tune in uh, on the 5th at 2 p.m. We've got Bunny Brunel, a master class with Bunny Brunel. And then we have that following week, we have two concerts, one with uh, Ricky Matty Gucci. Uh, Rick, uh, Ricky is a, uh, an amazing bass player, plays with Carl Denson's Tiny Universe. So you might know Carl from his time with the Rolling Stones and also the Great Boy All-Stars. His Tiny Universe is no less amazing than all of those. And then we have a, a Halloween show on the 28th. So the 27th is Ricky, 28th is uh, our Halloween show with one of our regular performers here at the, uh, the, the Radio Ban Diego stage at Entertalk Media Networks. And then uh, lastly, we've you know, kind of a reminder, we've got a huge clinic with Tristan Bowden. You know him from Kenny Loggins from Chicago. We have John Paris from Earth, Wind & Fire been there for uh, a few decades now, so not to give his age out, but they'll be doing their, their uh, uh, basically answering questions, uh, having conversations with these icons, and then, uh, you know, we're going to uh, have more and more things coming in the future. Again, thanks to Artesia Pro for making all, all the great gear that we use, like this microphone right here, woohoo. So, and then, of mm -hmm. course, the audio interface that I am broadcasting on which is hopefully I don't disconnect myself. There we go. Um, <laughs> well, I appreciate everyone and all your time. My name is Florentino Buenaventura. I'm here with Anthony. Uh, oh, I just I lost your name, Anthony. Um, Matana. Matana. There we go. I yeah, but cool. we were talking about all of our funny <laughs> pronunciations before, so it's my fault for throwing you off. Yeah. No, no, no. My, my, my. Uh, uh, as as things go. Uh, my forgetful nature. I, you know, I, I don't. I try not to look at things. I try to internalize it. But uh, um, appreciate you, man, and looking forward to to seeing the success of these products. Thank you so much for having me, Florentino. I really appreciate it. All right, we're out of here. Catch you next time. <laughs>